Hi guys, welcome to the Sickass channel. Um, my name is Alexandra Wissingham. Today I'm going to be answering a few questions and giving you some guitar tips, hopefully, because now's the best time to start practicing. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> Um, my warm-up routine is usually about 10 to 15 minutes, I would say. Um, and then it kind of consists of, it kind of depends whatever I'm going to be practicing. I think that day sometimes it consists of things that might help with certain pieces that I'm going to be practicing. And I get kind of into a bit more of a technique based warm-up exercise. And then sometimes, um, usually it just consists of like scales, arpeggios, and then some studies and things like that. So for my right hand, because it gets very cold or like all the time, my hands are always cold because I have like weird circulation. Um, and for some reason, my right hand is a lot more kind of prone to just not working whenever I want to play anything, whether it be like slow pieces or fast pieces, sometimes it just kind of freezes. Um, so I find that the, the right hand fingering from the Villa Lobos Etude number no. one is kind of, I mean, it's a really like fiddly fingering. Um, but I find that doing that, not necessarily with the left hand yet, because I kind of like to do separate hands first, but I find that doing that kind of separately, so maybe like mute the strings and just... And I kind of mute the strings because... It gets very annoying for anybody else who can hear you. And for me, to be honest, it's kind of like, oh, open strings, like not again. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I kind of do that and sometimes I'll like accentuate different fingers, so... And it sounds quite cool sometimes when you mute it. You can't, you're, not, you're never used to hearing that sound of a guitar, so it's kind of like, oh, you know, maybe I'll play like this more often. Don't play like that more often. <laughs> um, and then left hand, obviously, you can add the... It sounds very weird when you start accenting different fingers because you, you create these like weird syncopated patterns. But um, yeah, I find that really helpful for sort of gaining a bit more control of your right hand when you're warming up. Yeah, left hand, um, I tend to just do th like scales, so I do mostly three octave scales. So I find that practicing those really slowly really helps. I don't tend to start by just playing like, you know, all three octave, like um, So I might start by doing like a slow three octave, um, like dotted rhythm, so. And then you'll do it the other way, so. Um, I also tend to do sometimes um, like groups of notes, so sometimes I start with that just because when you go straight in, a, it can be quite like, oof, you know, like just woken up, shouldn't be doing this. So, kind of give you a bit more of like you settle into it a lot better um, as opposed to sort of going like Brrr. but I have a bit of a system of the way I work with scales so when I get into sort of doing the you know, the whole scale like up and down at a set tempo so I'll start with E which you know probably probably a good starting point um, E all the way up to B if I'm feeling adventurous sometimes sometimes I'll stop at G because you know I haven't had enough coffee that morning or something so I tend to do E major then E harmonic minor then E melodic minor, um, and then chromatic. Sometimes, you know, you can mix it up, but it's always, each one is with a different finger. So all of all of the scales on E, so those four scales, for example, will be with I am, I am, I am, alternating all the way up, all the way down. And then I'll do exactly the same on F, but that will be M, A, M, A, M, A, alternating. F sharp, I usually do I and A. And then when I get to G, it gets a little bit more complicated because, well, that's just if I'm feeling adventurous. I like to do I, M, A, M, I, M, A, M. So if you start on I, you always should really be finishing with A. That's kind of how you know you've done it right. Which I find really, really helpful because when you first start to do that, it's really kind of like, oh my God, like which finger should I be on? I've definitely just repeated it, oh my God. But when you get the hang of it, it kind of, it's so satisfying. Like if you've got like a little bit of your brain that's like a little bit OCD, if you master the scale, it's just, oh, feels great. <laughs> 
the point of a warm-up routine is to get rid of all the horrible stuff before you start practicing. And there's always gonna be horrible stuff in practice. It doesn't need to sound like it's pretty. Yeah, you know what? It's, it's kind of a bit of a weird one with tremolo because I haven't played a tremolo piece like as part of my repertoire for a while, but I always find that it's like tremolo is something that I incorporate into my everyday warm-up routine anyway, even if I'm not, like I said, I'm not playing a tremolo piece. Just because I think it's one of those, it's one of those techniques that if you can do sort of like effectively, you're able to do most of the things with your right hand in a way because it's so, you have to be so precise and so even. So I'll start with. P-A-M-I-P-A-M-I. And you're always obviously trying to get it as even as possible with the da 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 I find it really helpful to accentuate different fingers and do dotted rhythms. So for example, if you start with um, dotted rhythms. And then the other way, so. So on. Um, and then when you've done that, I find it really helpful again to accentuate the fingers, like I said before. So because in tremolo, you, it's very very easy to make it sound like one of the fingers it is accentuating. So for example, if you do, you know, like it's very easy if you're playing a piece to not realise that it's sounding like, you know, it, it's like the A finger kind of stands out naturally a lot. Of Getting each finger sounding like a sort of flowy melodic line when you're playing with three different fingers on one note can be quite difficult. So if you accentuate each one in this exercise, then by the time you come to actually playing a tremolo piece or just trying to play evenly, it's, it's much easier to hear which finger you're accentuating. So if you... So that's A. M. And then I. You can also incorporate both of those, so you could go... And you can accentuate the A finger or any of the fingers and do the dotted rhythm at the same time, which is kind of a bit more of a like... But... <laughs> It doesn't need to sound like it's pretty at all. Like the point of the point of a warm-up routine is to get rid of all the horrible stuff before you start practicing. And there's always gonna be horrible stuff in practice, you know. It took me a long time to deal with that. I was like, oh my god, it sounds so horrible. And then it's like, well, you know, you gotta work at it before it becomes less horrible. And then when someone says, you know what, that doesn't sound horrible, it's like, thank you so much. <laughs> on what like what context it's in so I think in things like Scarlatti I find right hand trills I don't know I just love the sound of them but obviously more if, you, if you've got stuff in sort of like 19th century music I don't know I find sometimes that I have, feel like I have more control with the left hand exercise wise like making up your own exercises is really useful so if you're practicing something like the Villa Lobos prelude number one where you have the you have two two trills in there if you're practicing something like that, then I think, for example, making up exercises. Moving them down and up. So if you can get your hand as used to that shape as possible, as used to sort of making that, like, sort of like muscle memory in that sense, but your fourth finger obviously always having to hit it really in a really, really good place with the fourth finger. Because if you if you hit it with, for example, if you don't hit it like the tip of your fourth finger, then you get... You know, your, your finger's just kind of like flopping on the string. Whereas if you get... 
then you're gonna get like a much more precise drill. I think sound wise, like mostly with me, it's down to nails. Long story short, I have to wear one false nail on my A finger and I have done for probably about 10 years um, and probably will always have to. But yeah, I, I try to use, I try to use like my own nails where I can because I don't particularly like using false nails. This is probably quite controversial, I have to say. <laughs> I talked about this once before on like a live stream and people were like, you know, you can use other things other than toilet paper. And I was like, probably. <laughs> I tend to get a very, very, very small bit of like toilet paper or kitchen roll or tissue paper or anything like that and rip it up so that it's literally you have like one layer of it because obviously that kind of paper, can, it's like a few layers so you need one tiny little layer of it and what I tend to do, and this is definitely not necessarily like the go-to way of doing it but it definitely works for me so I tend to put that on top of the split so you've got to be careful because if there's any sort of draft or you breathe, it just flies to the other end of the room and it's just like, well, that's gone forever. And you drop, well, I drop, the very, very smallest of droplets of this glue onto the tissue paper so that nothing else catches it. So I have like normal nail glue, which is like extra quick dry or something. So you're not kind of like sticking yourself to the couch or anything. <laughs> not happened before. And it basically just kind of, it forms, like I said before, it forms like a little second skin on top of the nail so that you can no longer see the split of it. So try not to get like the nail glue stuck under your nail because that, when, you, when you're fine in your nails, that does come out, but it's very difficult to kind of get all of it. But yeah, nail glue and toilet paper will be your best friends. Yeah, I think the best advice, to be honest, that I've been given is how to practice as opposed to sort of like how to technically play the guitar. Because I think practicing efficiently is one of the most difficult things. What's worked for me most is sort of setting myself little goals that I want to get done throughout the day or throughout one practice session. Because I used to set myself bigger goals of, you know, okay, I'm going to have this piece done by today. And it's kind of a bit like you spend three hours or whatever on it. And then by the end of the day, you haven't, you know, if you haven't done that, you feel like you've really like let yourself down or just not accomplished anything in practice when really you've probably accomplished quite a lot but you come away feeling quite bad about it so I think it's really important to sort of it's a very much like a mental thing I think of making yourself feel like you've accomplished something when you have like giving yourself credit really because it can feel like a really long uphill struggle <laughs> that's such a difficult one you know I think my favorite piece to play because I have lots of like pieces that I absolutely love but I've never played and just love listening to. I think one of my favorite pieces to play is the Sardard number no. three that you released on Sickass channel um, not that long ago because it's just so fun to play. Like it's just un unbelievably kind of like you're everywhere at the same time. It's still just got so much like motion to it and rhythm and the three different movements are kind of so contrasting. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I just love it. I love Dion's music. I think it's great, great, great. <laughs> That's the beginning of the third movement and it's very kind of like, whoo, hits you in the face. <laughs> I love, um, I mean, I love Saw, I love Barrios. There are just low, there are too many to pick from. <laughs> I very much kind of like, at the moment, I'm like into sort of Barrios quite a lot. What is it? I really, really like Martin Diller. I really love his playing. I think it's just, it's just so expressive and so like, yeah, gets me every time. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to the Sickass channel and to mine. Um, I actually release all of the videos that I release on YouTube um, a few days earlier on my Patreon channel. So if you're able to, or you'd like to see sneak previews of things, have guitar lessons, etc., um, feel free to support me on there. But if not, then I hope to see you very soon. Thank you.